All right. Good evening, everyone. This is Dorf from Squad Ops, joined by Boogie and Nuclear Twister. Basically, your event team leadership. We're also being produced and uh, with additional side commentary by Wilbur, the manager of the media team, also who is recording for us. Thank you all for joining the podcast, or excuse me, the Opscast. I was reading podcasts as I said that. Uh, joining the Opscast, today's topics will be a further look into our jump into Arma 3, as well as a discussion on leadership within squad ops. On, and what I mean by that, leadership within our One Life events and even pub server play. So starting off, back in, I want to say March, March or April, we did a ops cast, the uh, three of us plus one or two others did an ops cast talking about our getting into Arma 3 as, as a community and what it means for us and what, what we have to look forward to. Now, it's been about eight months, seven, eight months since that time, and a lot has happened, not just in, of course, real life, but, or, you know, outside the video game realm, but within squad ops. A lot has happened within squad ops, and we've learned a lot from from where we want to go with Arma. So quickly, I'll, I'll turn it over to Boogie and then Nuclear to have them introduce themselves real quick for those who may not know who they are. Uh, Boogie, go ahead. Hey guys, um, like Dorf said, I'm Boogie. Um, I am the event team assistant manager and also the community assistant manager. Been here for a while and looking forward to tonight. And I am Nuclear Twister, and I'm also an assistant manager here on the event team. And I'm also part of the mission design team for our Arma 3 operations, which we are making a big showcase of tonight. So looking forward to talking about that. Alrighty. Um, so, of course, I'm Dorf. I am the event team manager. Been around this community for a long time now, um, over three years, and I absolutely love being in this community. <laughs> I, I think uh, first uh, for our first topic, Arma. We've been playing Arma for generally two two or three ops a month. Is that about right, guys? Like two or three ops a month? I know there was a month where we didn't do any early. Right. Um, yeah, we're at two months now, steady. Yeah, so we've been doing two or three armas a month, probably three or four armas a month even. Um, and that's probably going to be about what we're doing, three or four a month, uh, especially given the new uh, schedule we've rolled out with. And so far, we're, we're really enjoying them. You know, they're a lot of fun. We've been adding some new dynamics to them. Uh, we start off with, you know, doing stuff on the original Altus map, um, some infantry gameplay in Altus. Then we started transitioning into doing uh, little special forces actions on, on also on Altus or Stratus or one of the two. And then we transitioned into doing ops on other maps, uh, infantry gameplay predominantly. And now we're getting into doing combined arms and most popularly doing Vietnam, uh, the unsung mod from for Viet, uh, that does Vietnam, Vietnam era, which has proven very, very, very popular with our, with our community, with our base. So, so much so that that's all people want to play. I know Boogie's a huge fan of doing the, the, the our, uh, the Vietnam stuff, whereas you know nuclear and I are you know huge fans of doing the uh, combined arms, but that's not to say we don't like doing the Vietnam. It's just everyone's got their own taste. Arma has so 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 much to offer, and it's impossible to just get it all, you know, please everyone and get it all done all at once. So, um, we're we're really thankful and really happy that we've had uh, the support we've had to this point and that we're starting to dabble more and more and more and do them more often because there's certainly a 
interest in doing so. Now, that being said, we could always use more people. Right now, we've been doing about a platoon, um, normal to slightly smaller size platoon, so 30 to 45 people generally. Um, however, we really, really, really want to get into you know, 45, 55, 70, 80 people in a server at once. That's what we're most looking forward to. Um, but we just we just need the people to show the interest. We need uh, just want more of you to come out and participate with us. Yeah, and ARMA is definitely something we're putting a focus on because when we build these missions, we don't necessarily build them just to have 35 or 40 slots. We put in 80, 90, 100 slots for that what if scenario of, hey, maybe everyone decides to show up today and absolutely love this mission. So we're definitely going to be having a push on ARMA going forward uh, out with the PR outreach, putting our name out there of squad ops coming in play our ARMA Ops, we're going to have ARMA Foundations and be able to take it hopefully to a two platoon element like you were saying, Dorf, which would be fantastic. Just the amount of new possibilities that open up when we have that many players is wonderful. Right. And, and as a lot of you are probably aware, the what's required for ARMA, Arma Foundations up to this point has generally been you need to be certified in our SOT SOTT or excuse me, or SOTT basic through squad, and then you get to go through Armor Foundations, which is a pretty quick course, or it can be a quick course that gives you an idea on on just how Armor works, like key binds and and uh, the radio play and one or two other things. But we're trying to make it so people who are not just squad players, those who are you know either predominantly Armor players or people who who play both but are not a part of our community officially can just come in, do Arma Foundations or some like structure and get in and play with us because it is important. We we recognize there's people out there who probably don't care about squad or probably don't official parts of our community through, you know, SOTT basic. We want to get anyone and everyone in uh, who, who wants to play with us. There's, I mean, there's a million Arma communities out there, a million. Um, and some of them, have been doing this a long time. Others are fairly new. We're fairly new, but I feel like we've got we've got a lot of things that traditional Arma communities don't have. Um, having seen a few myself, and I know the other guys here have seen a few themselves, um, I think we're blessed with the level of organization and structure that we have. Um, the logistics side, the administrative side of things um, handle generally pretty well, and we've most of our issues have been server side um, versus, you know, just being lo slow or lazy or not having a clue what's going on. We we don't have any of that here. Um, everything's pretty squared away. Um, what where we see the struggles is generally sometimes our um, missions get funky, but we're still ironing out that process. Do you guys have any any takes on that as well? I just think, uh, you know, beginning stages of where we're at, you know, there's only room for improvement. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Obviously, you know, we want to see more people in here to uh, to expand upon what we can do. You know, there's only so much you can do with a, a medium-sized platoon of 30 to 40 people, you know. Uh, we, we really want to see what, what kind of different dynamics we can get with uh, a larger platoon. A larger group of people um i think that'd be very interesting to see uh where we can take things uh mission mission wise uh with with a full two platoons i think that'd be pretty cool to see yeah i know it's gonna be fantastic and even currently we already have continuity going on with our arma ops this is now week three of our Vietnam campaign where third platoon gets to go in and uh, see what happened to first and second platoon. So it, that just gives us something totally new that we can play with compared to regular squad and bolstering our numbers from just a single platoon to two platoons in Arma would be a fantastic upgrade. And it's definitely uh, it's an outreach that we want to pursue. Yeah, exactly. If, if any of the viewers here or any of the listeners uh, have any questions or any or any thoughts or anything you want to throw out there go ahead and please put it in in uh, chat here on twitch or youtube 
or however you're watching it, uh, or if you're going to be watching this later on or listen to this later on, go ahead and throw it in uh, throw it in the Arma channel there on our Discord, or go ahead and DM one of us threes. Uh, and I see a question popped up just now as I said that. Uh, we have streamed, we've streamed several Arma. Generally, I stream, um, I'll stream Arma games or, or Arma missions every so often. I may do that here this Friday uh, when we play Arma again. Um, I've been getting much better frames with a newer PC, so I'm more comfortable doing that. So, of course, uh, we've got, I don't know if they're still up on our Twitch. But you could probably go through and search for some clips or some uh, previous streams. Some good clips on there. <laughs> yeah, there there's some pretty good clips of of us and Arma. And if it's not on our Twitch, um, it might pop up on our YouTube at some point. And then you can always go into the Ops Media channel on our Discord. And if you search in there, you'll definitely find them. Uh, and Again, guys, if you have any interest or you know someone who does, just direct them to us. Direct them to the Squad Off CG uh, website, or excuse me, Discord and website. And you can find all that information here on our Twitch. Um, one other thing I thought about is myself. I know myself and, and Nuclear Twister here, we're both pretty nerdy when it comes to, you know, like potential World War III kind of conflict. Or, or you know something of that nature, and I know our grand mission designer man Xbit has also been thinking about that same process, uh, and what that what that you know what that involves. And so I think one of the next things we're going to start seeing in our Arma missions is is uh, World War Three, like a, a 1989 scenario where. NATO versus the Warsaw Pact, the U.S. versus the Soviet Union, late 80s, and I have a lot of excitement about that. There's, it's not over the top with like optics or anything. It's still that middle of the road. Still, it's sort of modern, but also not entirely. Um, a lot of the same equipment still used 30 years later. Uh, just their older variations. Um, it's it's something that really plays into my own my own interest so very much looking forward to that and uh second to that would be uh you know more vietnam or even world war ii missions or even just back to modern day there's there's plenty of opportunities for modern day they don't necessarily have to just be the united states but you know um the british they'd be the british i know expit has been working on setting up a british faction we've got his what what's it called nuclear like ruthenian oh the grand ruthenian army yeah, yeah expert created his own uh faction called the grand ruthenian army um it's basically like a, a central or eastern europe type force yeah um, former soviet bloc country yep similar to what uh Chernarus would be or livonia if you have played arma enough and then play or even uh, doing like Norway. I know Nuclear and I have discussed doing a Norway style or Norwegian style mission um, through one of various maps. That's something, uh, I mean, playing on a winter map especially would be pretty cool. Uh, pitch white, uh, especially if you can get the winter camo. Yeah, absolutely change things up. And going back to those mod packs, yeah, I mean, with the recent schedule changes we've had, we're looking at anywhere between two to four AMA ops a month. And we could, with the different mod presets we have, we could be looking at doing Vietnam on a Friday. On Sunday, we go to a mid-1980s, late-80s Cold War. And the next week, then we jump back into modern day. And the Saturday after that, or Sunday after that, then we swap and go to just a fun mission for just a one-off in some random time period that we decide, like, throwing it back to World War II. And using these different mod packs will definitely give us that adaptability of, hey, everyone wants to play Vietnam. Well, let's have a couple of Vietnam missions in a row and ground, ground it out and have a great time doing it. There's just so much you can do with the mods that are available. Uh, literally every time period, 
probably uh, World War Two on is is available factions upon factions of stuff that we could in, introduce into this. So you know the mission types are just there's a plethora of stuff we can do uh, with all the mods that are offered in Arma. It's pretty cool to to think about all the stuff that we could do that like squad we couldn't do based upon the limited factions but uh limitless flat factions for arma is pretty cool to think about yeah and we have really limitless ideas of just because we have a vietnam mod pack doesn't mean you know we're gonna be playing the same missions and the same factions each time we can flip it around and play the vc or we can go on a totally new map and have this wonderful diverse environment that is something we don't necessarily always get in squad just because it's totally different games trying to fill totally different niches and the way that we've been pursuing armor recently has been i think fantastic and definitely poised for growth right i think uh so far everything we we encounter we encounter issues with every every um arm op and for those who have played armor you know that armor is very finicky there's there's a lot of issues with the game itself, especially when you have a mass amount of people and you throw a million mods at it. Um, but I think so we as these others, the other guys here have already said, there's there's a lot of mods out there. Our own mod pack, our own mod set um, changes slightly almost every mission that we do. Um, either we add something or we take something out. Now, when it comes to the actual missions, we we do have issues here and there, and predominantly those issues come with uh, the strength and capability of the AI. Now the AI is not always the most intelligent, but the AI can, you know, screw you up pretty good. And <laughs> some you got to you got to know the medical system. However. The medical system also has to be tuned just the way you need it, and it, there's there's a lot of variation with the medical system, Ace Medical, and it takes a lot of fine tuning to get it just to where you want it. Same thing with the enemies; you can make them really tanky, or they eat up bullets, or you can make them, you know, about as weak as a, you know, earthworm. It's it it really varies, and that's that that's the biggest thing we're still trying to fine tune. I think we're at the for the most part we're at exactly where we want our enemies to be, on um, time to kill or sh uh, shots to kill. But when it comes to the medical system, there's still a little bit of tweaking there. Um, if you've seen my t uh, my streams or my videos, you'll see that I'll go down, and I might be down for 10, 15 minutes. Now I could be completely like bandaged up and stabilized and everything, but I'm still unconscious for like 10 or 15 minutes. That's what we're trying to cut out. And and we're still struggling to get to that point um, with the settings and so on. But it that that's probably going to be the one of the biggest drawbacks. However, it's it's not too bad because we do have we could still listen to comps and and other things going on in the background, even if we're just looking at a black screen. But I, I want to hear from the other guys here. What what do you think our biggest challenges have been so far or the things we struggle with the most? Yeah, medical has definitely been something we struggled with. And that just goes back to the mission balance of in the beginning, we put we we kept it fairly vanilla and we realized, wow, the AI is an absolute bullet sponge. We need to make them, you know, actually die if we shoot them six or seven times in the skull. And so we had to dial their health pool way back and then it turned out to wow we're just rolling over the ai like we need to give them something to where it's not this easy because we went through an entire mission we barely had any wounds didn't have any kia and that's not that's not fun just to you know curb stomp the enemy and walk all over them you, you want to have an actual challenge and feel that actual tension in an engagement and so that's definitely something that we're pursuing now that we've got medical in a much better place where yes you're going to be dealing damage and if you put your shots on target you're going to knock the guy down but the same is for true for you if you take a couple hits you're you're going to go down and you're going to get hurt and that it's it gives it a very tense environment in your engagement because one shot may not kill you 
but two or three and you're going to be back on your ass and begging for the medic to come by and pick you up. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you want to make sure that all um, all the kits that we are offering, um, you know, whether it be a GL all the way to medic, you want to make sure that the same level of, ex- of, of the experience that you're getting is is there, you know? When you have uh, different different health pools like he was like uh nuclear was talking about uh we we wanted to make sure the medics had something to do uh there was some complaints about you know the medics not not having enough to do and we want to make sure all the kids that are, are available are having a a good experience all around and that's really what we're trying to strive for all right wilbur do you have any thoughts i don't know if you've played a whole lot of the armor with us i can't remember but uh, I haven't I haven't played Arma with uh, squad ops yet, but I I played Arma three for years and years doing King of the Hill and uh, other gameplay, especially DayZ. Um, Arma just offers so much. I know Boogie was talking about like the amount of mod. There's just a plethora of mods on Arma that in other games you just don't get. I mean, you can custom tailor an Arma mission to whatever you want, whatever parameters that you want. So I, I really think it, it, those missions are going to open up opportunities that squad just hasn't realized yet. Right. Right. Um, so let's, let's switch gears then. What of, of the Arma missions you guys have played in, what, what do you think have been our strengths? What do you been? What do you think has been the best part? I think we've already kind of touched on a few of them, but I want to kind of really dive into that. Uh, you know, I, I've talked to Dorf and a couple other people about this before, but I think something that uh, we really have a strength in is uh, our, you know, uh, historical uh, mods that we that we use. You know, uh, Dorf touched upon the 1980s, 1990s kind of stuff that we can't we're we're looking to get into but uh especially with that vietnam i I had a a hell of a time going around and you know just getting into you know getting immersed into that that world of of vietnam and and you know the brush and the the jungle the dense jungle and and no comms that that's also a huge thing for me The, the no comms you don't have a radio on you you have to keep close to your guys and make sure that you know everybody is still up. Nobody's hurt. Your situational situational awareness is really tested in those historical ones, uh, where you don't have a radio on you at all times, and you can't check in with your fire team and stuff like that. I think that is a you know it's a different it's a different taste. Uh, I think we added that. And I think it's doing very well. I, I had a hell of a lot of fun with it. You know, it's fun to have you know the radio on you and and be able to uh, talk to your fire team, but it was a good um, change of pace, if I should say. Yeah, I think one thing that we do very well is how we handle brand new players and guys who necessarily aren't familiar to the squad ops side of squad ops, where once you join into a game for our armor operations, you're going to be given a buddy, you're going to be giving a fire team leader, you're going to be given a squad leader, and all these different people who are going to be there to ensure that you're having a good time. And they're going to be the safety net for, even if you haven't necessarily played a ton of Arma or even any Arma, you're going to be walk through this engagement. You're going to have a good time and you're going to be in the thick of it. You're going to have a lot of tension playing these, but you're always going to have that safety net of your your squad leader who's been through this before, your fire team leader who knows what to do, and your buddy who's always going to be there next to you, sitting there holding, not necessarily holding your hand, but making sure that, you know, you're comfortable with the way the operation is, and if you have any questions, these guys are going to be there to help you. It's it's something that is very nice to see in Arma, is that we, we can drop almost anyone into these ops, and they're going to be given a guided path that they're going to go down and have a great time doing. Awesome, yeah. Um, and I think for myself, for myself here, um, what I believe we've done an absolute, you know, done absolutely well at 
and it's not really us as a community or us as like squad ops itself, but it's the people within the community that come out and play with us. On average, our quality of player from the leadership level down all the way to the, you know, rifleman, lowest rifleman has been extremely high. I think we've had extremely high player quality versus, you know, not to speak ill of our, you know, squad, but I think everyone's more in tuned. They're, they're more engaged. They're, they're, um, more responsive and receptive. Uh, we've got our, our leadership even is much stronger. Granted, it's our most experienced SLs and, and commanders and such, but even our fire team leaders, I think everyone from the top to the bottom is about as high quality as we could ever hope to ask for. Um, and this, this is going to kind of segue into our next topic here in a little bit, but I, I just, I cannot get over how, how much I enjoy our armor missions just because of how high quality all the members that participate in it are. Now, the last thing I want to ask the group here is. What do you love to play as the most? When we when we have these armor missions, what do you love to play as the most? Oh, so I, I got a wonderful cop out answer here. Is I love to be the Zeus and be the Overlord and essentially the commander of the opposition force for whatever operation we're doing inside of Arma. I love to be able to throw a ton of enemy soldiers at this wonderful platoon that is barely hanging on for life and just seeing if I can crack that nut to where, oh, I might actually have to force them to retreat for once in their life. And it is an absolute blast being able to see just how much you can throw at these guys and just how much they're able to take. You wouldn't think that a single platoon could fight off two or three or four companies worth of infantry over the course of a mission, but here we go. There, there goes Splatoon fighting them off. Uh, personally, you know, I, I'm not as in tune with uh, Arma as as a lot of the guys in our uh, our community are. Um, squad leading um, is definitely something I'm I'm interested in. But right now, I, I really love FTLing, um, basically because um, you know it's a it's a different feel from squad. You know, FDLing and squad is is fun, but there's a it's a different twist that you put on when you're the FTL of a uh, an, an arm mission. Taking over for uh, say a downed SL, uh, trying to get your guys out of contact, it, it's just a different feel in Arma than it would be in squad. So I really have been enjoying the FTL role um, in Arma lately. I'll have to agree with Boogie there. I. I I've commanded a few. I've squad led in a few. I'm actually squad leading on Friday for our next Vietnam mission. Um, and I've FTL quite a bit. I've also riflemen a few. Um, I think I think my favorite is just being a. Uh, well, I guess it, it's twofold. I love being a leader of a small team, like a weapons team. If we're if it's like the javelin team or or something like that, or a vehicle crew. Love being the commander or the the leader of that team, but just in general, I love being a fire team leader in, in Arma because unlike like unlike in our squad missions or our squad ops, the FTL actual has an amount of autonomy of what they can do. There there's more free reign. You have more freedom of movement uh, in general than you would in squad. In squad, you're kind of restricted by the game itself and the and the UI. The user interface of the game, but in Arma you don't have that. You don't have those same restrictions, especially if you have the right mod set. And that's what I absolutely truly love about about those leadership roles is you get a little bit more autonomy to act and react and and to utilize your guys. Now, speaking of leadership roles, that'll be a nice segue here into our second topic of discussion for this opscast. Oh, you're not just going to take it away from there? No, nah, no, nah, you're running the show. I'll let you keep going with it. You just, you just steal my segue. <laughs> and you, you steal my segue. You don't even go with it. Okay. All right. So, yeah, 
as as nuclear said, our next our next little topic here is actually on our leadership. Um, this is <laughs> this is not Boogie Five Gaming. This is just Boogie. Uh, he better known as I. What were you, Boogie Man before? I was Boogie Man before. That was a long time ago. Many yeah. moons. So he's just been Boogie. Uh, no. <laughs> but, anyways, I, I, leadership. Uh, so squad, squad ops has gone through quite a number of iterations. Um, and by iterations, I mean like we we've gone through leadership changes. We've gone through um, structural changes and process changes uh, over the course of four and a half years of playing. Because, um, you know, this community has been around since April 2016. Um, and, you know, you can only be the same for so long. You got to keep things fresh, got to shake them up. One thing that's been a constant throughout the entire life of this community has been quality leadership. Quality leadership from the commander to the squad leader to the fire team leader down to the lowest rifleman has always been an important factor. Now, early on, when this game was still fairly new, there was, you have more experienced people, people who took this game seriously, really cared about the game. Um, it was still new. Uh, everyone who was into it were the people who, you know, absolutely really, really wanted to play this game for what it was. Now, over time, as as new updates have been pushed out, and this game has grown older, and the player base has pretty much well expanded, um, the game has grown, um, things have changed. So we don't have the same people we had four years ago for the most part. We've got a lot of new blood, and we still have new blood. That's not a bad thing. That's certainly good for us, good for squad. Um, but it makes it harder to actively keep our that high quality leadership up so i i used to have i actually used to do talks uh what back when i had time in a life uh where i would go over with our, our own ops people like our regulars and those who are more inexperienced on the leadership side um in a process completely outside of our sought leadership uh classes that we had at that time and i would talk about you know leadership in our squad squad ops one life events so like squad leading squad leading is is an issue getting getting squad leaders is an issue we have almost every single op we do these days and it's actually been that way for oh, a good chunk of the year now um leadership you know leadership at squad whether it's public play or one life event it's not the most glamorous or thrilling thing to do um uh, not when you have a million other kits out there these days, uh, courtesy of the developers, courtesy of the game. But we 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 really hammer down on what quality leadership is and what what you know what that means to our operations. You, I mean, for for our my regs my regs and staff members who want to be leaders or who are thinking about going into squad leading and such, don't you know don't be afraid of what it is. It's it it really isn't that bad. And it it is quite a lot of fun. It's not it's not really it's not as intimidating as it sounds as long as you don't take it too seriously. You you just gotta sit back, relax, enjoy the fun, enjoy your squad people, and that's where the fun comes from. It's not it's not so much the the uh, you know talking on com uh, command comms with the other leaders. Or, or the platoon leader, or whatever. It's interacting with your squad, using your squad to complete the objectives, and then just the firefights. I mean, as a squad leader, you're not expected to be on the fire, the front of the firefights every time, but you know, using your guys to the best of their abilities to complete your team's objectives. That's that's what it really comes down to. Um, I've been I've been doing it. I think I still have the record for. For uh, school time squad led in this community, but that yeah, probably staff, bro. <laughs> probably passed by now since I've taken time off. But I I think uh, it it really is one of the most important things. I just I want to I want I want to help everyone get better at it. I know these two here as well. They're 
they're both fairly competent SLs in their own right or leaders in their own right. And we're all here to just make everyone better. And we want to make everyone better because we don't always have those avenues within, you know, within our Discord or within our operations. Do um, you guys have any, any thoughts on that before we get a little bit deeper? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, you know, it can be a, a little difficult for the, for the new person, uh, new reg coming in um, to kind of wrangle the the people have said before it's it's wrangling cats. We're we're just trying to make the experience as as enjoyable as possible, and that's also the responsibility of of the squad leader is to try to make sure that you are uh, making a a good experience for everybody. Um, you know, we we've we've gone through different phases where we are, are just trying to uh, make sure that the quality of leadership is, is to the, is to the snuff that we can uh, make sure that everybody's having a great time. Even the SLs, uh, we want to make sure the SLs are having a great time, FTLs all the way down to, you know, just your regular riflemen. So um, that is something that has been a topic lately. And uh, we just want to make sure that, uh, we continue having that quality throughout. Yeah, it's definitely something that we've been talking about internally because being a squad leader is, it definitely can be a personal sacrifice because you're not going to be the guy at the front of the line taking contact instantly and getting out there and having all that glory for yourself. You're definitely more of a support asset sitting in the back of the squad, managing your fire teams, managing your buddy teams, making sure that you're communicating with leadership at the platoon level, making sure that your squad is completing its assigned objectives. And that doesn't involve firing your gun a ton. And that definitely can be a sacrifice for some people that they'd much rather be at the front of the tip of the spear leading off rather than sitting in the back acting as a manager. But but we need squad leads because there has to be someone to fill that role in every op. And now that we've gone from having four squads to five squads on each team in squad ops, thanks to OWI implementing the 100 player servers, we got to a point where, okay, we're getting better at filling uh, four on each side. And then OWI drops this where now we need to get another squad lead for each side. And it, it can put some pressure on guys who already step up way too much. And if you constantly are asking for new squad leads, it can be a little intimidating to a regular who's seen all these pings of, wow, why can't they get, you know, leaders up here to be a squad lead? And it's because it's it's not always the most glamorous position. You're not always going to get a lot of feedback, and the feedback that you typically will get is going to be critical of you because everyone, when you're out there on the radio barking orders to your fire team, they're going to hear the bad stuff come through, and the good stuff is just going to slide on by because that's what expected. So tackling our leadership problem is, is very nuanced, and it's definitely something we've had multiple talks internally about and something we want to make sure that everyone's kept in the loop on now because it, it is a problem we've been having, but it's also one that we're actively working towards fixing. But we can't do that without talking to the regs and talking to everyone else in this community and bringing them on board with how we can move forward. Yep, that's that's exactly it. And I know we keep referencing our, our regs and our staff, but you know, we're we're constantly bringing on new people, people who have been a part of this community as a public member, participating in our ops and so on um, for time. We're, we're constantly bringing on new people to become regs or to become staff. So don't, don't think this doesn't apply to you now because at some point it will apply to you. Um, we've got, we do have people who, who've admitted that they don't want to, they're too scared to take on leadership for a ver various reasons. They don't want to be a leader for various reasons because either they're scared of, you know, letting everyone down or they just don't think they're prepared or it's just or it's some reason is too intimidating. Maybe it's intimidating because, you know, who their their uh, um, colleagues would be or who, who their equals would be or what. But we, we just, <laughs> we want you to know that we won't send anyone in who is completely and vastly unprepared. We're always helping people um, before the op, between ops, even in the op itself. For the setup, we have a very, a very defined setup period that walks people through what the operation is, 
and we handheld or hold hands for those people who need their hand being held. We've got people in our community, staff members in our community who mostly uh, um, experienced SLs and, and commanders and such who mentor, who are there to mentor new SLs or any SL who, who wants it. Um, and so we, we have several safety nets there. It's just having everyone understand and understand it's there. Now, there, there are also specific, you know, leadership traits and, and characteristics to take away for like our One Life events, um, for example. You don't want to be, you don't want to micromanage. I mean, if in most cases, you'll probably hear like, oh, don't micromanage, don't micromanage. That's, that's a good way to turn people off to you. Well, I agree. Don't, don't micromanage your your squads or your teams or your your soldiers or your players or whoever. Don't micromanage them too too much. Otherwise, you're just gonna tick them off the whole time. They're not gonna wanna to play or, or or to listen to you. Now, I will admit there is there is a time and place when micromanaging is acceptable. Maybe you have a weaker team or you have a weaker squad. Then you want to micromanage them, or they're struggling to listen. Sorry about that. And then other times, uh, you want to be super loosey goosey. Uh, if you've got a good experienced team, good experienced SL, whoever, give them free reign. If you think they earned free reign or they have the ability to go do good work um, without a leash on them, let them do it. I know there's a couple SLs that I would. You know, let do that any time they ask, or almost any time they ask. Um, but they also have to know when when to rein it in. If if you tell them no, don't do something, they better not do that, right? So they have to be able to listen to commands uh, given to them either from their fire team leader, their squad leader, or their commander. Are you, would you guys do you guys think you would agree with that? Yeah, wholeheartedly. Definitely. I mean, it's it's just, you know, th there's different, especially people who've done it for a long time. Uh, I think most of us here have been doing it over a year. I know Dwarf has been doing it for the better part of three years. It's just, it, it's an experience level. And, you know, as a commander, that's that's what you, you try to rein in the guys who, um, you know, who, who don't have the most experience, but you also want to let them you know, learn and, and grow in that role. Um, that's a big thing we want to express as well. I think uh, some of the biggest issues I've seen over the years when it comes to, to leaders is th those who cannot take feedback, those or those who struggle to, who, to accept feedback given to them, um, Sometimes, sometimes people will just fight it, like, "Oh, that's not what happened," or, or uh, um, "Oh, well," and they they give they give an excuse. Don't I, I mean? If someone's got a critique for you, just take it for what it is. If you know for a fact that it didn't go that way, then then just you know keep that to yourself. Take the critique, carry on. There's there's no reason to to get in a you know a pissing match because someone thought you did something wrong. We're all here to be better. We're all here to have fun. And it's not about you as the leader. It's about the experience of the people under you. Now, we don't want to ruin your experience, but we also have more than just you to think about. Um, I know that's, that's, I've seen, a, I can't even, I can't even tell you how many people I've seen over the years who, who freak out when they're given feedback or, or just go every single op without taking that feedback to heart. Um, and then there's other leaders. There's other leaders I have seen who who struggled really badly in the beginning, and then when they're given more and more feedback, they you know they improve. I, I've seen a lot of people do that as well. So it's really taking feedback, understanding how to incorporate that feedback is is really big, really key. Um, other things I, I think I've seen is, uh, like situational awareness. 
you can kind of teach situational awareness, but it's also one of those things you have to kind of just develop on your own. And that comes with with uh, experience in the game. Now, I still see people who have played thousands of hours or a thousand hours in squad who have absolutely no clue what's going on five feet away from them, let alone, you know, in the battle space all around. But I also see people who, you know, who the be- really the best leaders, the best leaders are the people who have great situational awareness and can keep up with what's going on. There's, it's, this is probably one of the most intimidating parts is you've got command comms going on. You've got squad comms going on. You probably have local comms going on. Plus you're in the middle of a firefight that, you know, four or five different things going on and you're trying to keep track of all of it. That, that can be really hard, but training yourself to have that situational awareness. So you can at least track two or three of those five things that. That's what makes that's what makes the great leaders is to be able to understand where the fight is, who's in the fight, you know what's what the weapons are um, in some cases, and, and so on. Um, being able to track all that is what really determines the the weak from the strong, as well as some of the other things I brought up. Um, other good leaders, they they're you know fairly personable with their team. They they can they can interact with their team. They can interact with their squad, and they can you know it's not all about you know smoking and joking and having a good time. But you know if they if they know that you are out there for their benefit rather than your own, they're gonna want to fight with you. They're gonna play with you, and they'll want to play with you again over and over and over. That if just remember it's it's for everyone's benefit not just your own yeah and i think that's one of the biggest things to take away is when you're going to become a squad lead or even if you just want to volunteer once or twice to be a squad lead that you want to take care of everyone in the fire teams and everyone in your squad make sure that they're having a great time because that's really what matters yes we're here for ourselves and we want to have fun doing all this stuff but we also want to make sure that the people around us are having a great time doing this that's why we put all these operations on that's why we branch into arma and that's why we're taking on the new challenges that we're taking on and putting on this ops cast is because you know we want to do this for you guys obviously yes we enjoy it ourselves but we want to make sure that the people around us enjoy it as well bogey you're one of those middle of the road leaders you have any thoughts middle of the road leaders huh wait a minute (laughs) Uh, it's just you know, it's it's not even it's not just the SLs we're talking to here as well. Uh, you know, the quality FTL really makes or breaks what an FTL or what a squad leader wants to accomplish during the op. You know, uh, throughout this we we've we've talked majority about uh you know a squad leader and and his uh his role in the squad, but really in a, a quality two quality FTLs, even one quality FTL really changes what, um, what the squad is able to do and, and how much damage or how much you can accomplish as a squad, uh, really is, is dependent on how your FTLs perform. Um, uh, you know, and quality FTLs are, are something that we, we desperately need. Uh, so it's really good to have, uh, these guys, you know, even if it's your first time FTLing, you know, Dip your toes in it. Dip your uh, just try to try to keep uh, try to get that going. I mean, if 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 that's something you're interested in, speak up. Um, we need more quality FTLs uh, in order to make sure the squad can can run efficiently. That's one major thing I, I've I've seen over the past two years uh, here. Right. Exactly. I think. Um, I lost where I was. Yep. So I think uh, you, you mentioned that I, I'm going to go a step further and I'm going to throw a pitch out there. So if you're, if, if you ever thought that if you're an experienced, you know, player in squad or even squad ops, you've played in a million squad ops matches and you're like, Oh, I want to be a, I want to be able to squad lead in these. Or I want to be able to command in these. Well, 
I'll tell you the process for that right now. If you ever want a squad lead in a squad ops one life event, uh, you got to be a reg to do it. You got to be a regular or staff member. Now, if you're going to be a regular, we've, you know, you, you get voted on, you get voted on, recommended, and then brought on. And so that means you just have to put yourself out there, be known, be liked, enjoyed, and, and so on. If you want to be a commander, on the other hand, that is reserved for our staff members. So if you want to really truly be a commander in our events, then you, what you would need to do is you would have to be brought onto a team that accepts you. Um, a, a team, you know, you could do all this stuff for that team. You got to work yourself up through squad leading a little bit, get that experience squad leading. And then after a couple months, maybe uh, you get brought on as a commander trainee and go through the commander process. And then that's it. I mean, commanding, commanding can be a lot of fun. Commanding can be a lot of fun. Um, especially if it's the right group of guys, uh, either at the squad leader level or just the individual player level, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have the right group of guys, it can be a ton of fun. Um, now, sometimes you could have the right group of guys and they could still be boneheaded and make the wrong plays or things just don't go their way. Um, cause in the end, great leadership helps, but it's still the, the thing that wins the game is how well the shooters shoot or how well they throw their grenades, or how well they, you know, how well they do whatever. Um, so as good, as much as we talk about leadership, it, it still comes down to the shooter, which is what we like to joke about. Um, I think, <laughs> I think as well for our wannabe commanders, it, it, it truly is a lot of fun. I, You've got, there's some ops that, you know, maybe it's not that fun to command, but then you have other ops, like ops with that have like multiple options, which we call, you know, a stoplight ops. Um, really, you can do whatever thing you want to do that op, and then the next time we play, you can do something else entirely or something else, which is a fast change from a basic attack defend op that you might see. Or when they come back, you can do our Mars operations. Mars operations being, you know, the squad version of of our Mazus games. And hopefully soon we're going to come back to those. Those are where you really put the commander to the test and the squad leader to the test because it's a dynamic, ever changing objective. The, the objective changes throughout the mission. And that's, that's where commanders really shine or fail, really. And, and guys, we are, you know, we're running, you know, last eight minutes or so. Is there any any closing thoughts on you know what I just said or what you guys might bring up? And for those out in chat or those listening, um, last chance to ask uh, ask some questions before we wrap this up. I mean, I think it's you know again you know getting to that point of being able to squad lead and and uh, eventually commanding. You know, you want to. Um, it's something that. I think it, I desired whenever I was I was brought on as a reg um, back in the day, and it's you know it is it's some it's it's a level of responsibility you want to be able to perform, and it's just something you know you gotta gotta get used to. So um, I, I wouldn't be uh, very you know timid about doing it. I personally I dove right in, and um, I feel like I have got a good grasp on it, and. Um, it's something that I, I hope I can see more people do eventually. Yeah, if you if you're a reg and above and you want to go through the SL training process, don't think of it as a pass and fail. The mentors in those in that SL team are exactly what the word is mentors. They're sitting there, they're talking to you, they're helping you get better. I have yet to meet any of the mentors that were there to, to that want you to fail. They want you to succeed. They want you to be good. They want you to be confident. And, you know, recently going through it, like beforehand, I was like, man, I don't want to be the guy who gets his whole squad wiped on the Twitch. I don't want to be the one that everyone has a bad time. 
but the ones who were they sat down with me after everything was going on and you know we had a discussion like you know they said this is what you did wrong and I'm like okay this is why i did it and they'd be like okay that was a good decision or good initiative but bad judgment you know they they kind of like just walked me through the process and and helped me understand you know how to be better as a uh, squad leader it's not it's not a pass or fail it's they're there to help you get better which is in in the end game it's going to make the community better and that's their job so don't be don't don't be afraid to to be the one that you know fails or anything because the, the best thing that you're going to do is fail and you're going to learn from those failures and not do it again yep and i i see there's a question or actually a couple questions here in chat um screv asked uh or said he wanted to get more into ftling and want to know what the process for that or how to do that um, or at least get help on that and i know wilbur here answered him but really, if you want to get better FTLing, the only way to really get better FTLing is FTLing. So if you're in our One Life events, ask, 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 ask to be the FTL. When they ask for FTLs, ask for it. That's the way to get better just over time. And if you want feedback, if you want particular feedback on how to get better after that mission or what you need to do better, then ask your squad leader or ask the people in your squad. Those. Uh, those, especially those that were in your team. That is how you get better at it. Um, we can talk to you all day about what you, what the the theories are, the theoreticals, and and what makes a good FTL and such. But until you actually put that into place, you will not improve. Um, experience builds. Ex experience builds it. So, and then I know Stark Starker here asked for when we're going to do more SOT basics or SOTs. Um, that's as Boogie said in chat. Uh, SOTs are set up through the SOT team. The SOT team will do it as they're available. Generally, those are Thursdays and Saturdays, and some Sundays or some other day of the week. But generally, Thursdays and Saturdays. We predominantly do basics. However, we do um, a couple other SOTs thrown in there as well, maybe at advanced. I think we've got an Arma parachute training coming up on Sunday as well. I don't, I don't really know what that is, but I'll show up and see. Um, but I encourage you all to just check out our calendar, or if you have any questions, ping the SOT team and the SOT help channel on our Discord. Um, Nuclear, you have any closing comments? Show up for our Arma event this Friday. Let's see how many people we can get out in jungles of Vietnam. Right, Boogie, anything? else no i i enjoyed being on here today i hope this was uh informational for anybody who needed more information um again um we are very you know we're good at uh answering any questions that you guys may have so feel free to ask any questions um and yeah uh make sure you guys are volunteering to ftl uh practice makes perfect guys all right and wilbur uh, I'm all good. All right, guys. Well, again, thank everyone for joining us today, uh, tonight, and for our listeners who are going to come back and watch this later, listen to this later. Um, again, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the uh, Discord there so we can react to them. And I hope everyone has a great night or a great day, wherever they are. Happy Thanksgiving, Americans. Yeah, thank you, everyone.